What's up guys, it's Kelly and today I've got another swatch review for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos and let's get started. So today I am sharing with you guys the Orly Spring 2021 collection which is called Day Trippin. So we've got six brand new nail polishes. They're all kind of 70s inspired. It's super funky for spring and I totally love it. I'm very excited to share with you guys these swatches. If you guys haven't heard of Orly before, they are a mainstream salon brand. They are 12 free, meaning they are free of 12 of the dangerous chemicals that are often found in nail polish. They are vegan and they are cruelty free. But yeah, so we may as well just jump into it. I just want to share with you guys these incredible swatches. So let's just get started. So as usual, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I am using the Orly Bonder base coat, so I'll link it in the description. So we'll start off with this shade Can You Dig It, which is a really beautiful dusty red cream shade. And as you can see, the coverage on this is incredible, as are actually most of this collection. This one ended up being a one coater on me. The color of this is just so unique. I feel like it sits somewhere between being a brick red and being like a dusty salmon color. And I think the outcome is just absolutely stunning. This is definitely an any time of year color, and I think this is also a really great shade for people who are more into the reds and pinks but kind of want to branch out into more exciting colors because this kind of verges on exciting territory. So you're looking at two coats here but again it was a one coater on me. Next up we have the shade Kitsch You Later and this one is a neon pastel orange cream and it was a little bit difficult for my camera to capture so it ended up actually being a little bit more cool toned than it looks but it does really have that very beautiful neon pastel vibe without having what I know as the neon pastel formula which tends to be really chalky and not self leveling. This one was another one that was fully opaque for me in one coat. Of course I am showing you a second in just to see what it looks like on the nail but oh my gosh the formula on these is absolutely incredible and I love this type of polish so I really hope to see more of these from Orly because they did an incredible job with this formula. Next up we have the shade Here Comes the Sun and this one's a really beautiful kind of mustardy yellow cream shade. Now this one was also slightly difficult to capture. I think it looks a little bit brighter on camera than it does in real life but it definitely has that like you know that classic 70s 70s mustard yellow color. I feel like that is definitely what this shade is. Now unlike the first two, this one was a little bit more sheer. It was opaque in two coats for me. You could still see some of the nail through on the first coat, but the second coat did give me that perfect coverage. And again, it's just so smooth and self-leveling. And honestly, yellow nail polishes, for me at least, tend to be at least three coats. So having an opaque two coat yellow is actually pretty decent. So this end shot I would say is the more accurate way that this looks. It's not as bright as it looked when I was actually painting it on. This is the true color. Next up we have the shade Happy Camper and this one is another of the neon pastel shades and it's kind of like a very soft version of a Tiffany blue, like a pastel version of that. So we finally have a somewhat classic color that you would expect to see in a spring collection but somehow how it just feels a little bit more vibrant and more exciting when it's surrounded by these other shades. So I know this isn't the most unique color, but it really does work with the others, which I think is actually really interesting because I didn't think to pair these neon pastel colors with like these mustardy dusty colors, but they actually look really gorgeous next to each other. So here it is in two coats, like the yellow one. This was a little bit sheer on the first coat, but gave me full coverage in the second. Next up we have the shade Let the Good Times Roll, and this is an absolute absolutely stunning, slightly dusty teal cream shade. And oh man, this is another one that I absolutely fell in love with as soon as I started applying it. Again, the coverage is really incredible. It was almost one coater on me, but I did end up needing a second. The color itself is absolutely perfect. It's just a really beautiful shade. I wouldn't expect to see it in a spring collection, but somehow it just really works, especially with the other ones. As I've come to expect from Orly, the formula was super smooth and self-leveling and it's also extremely glossy by the way but I always recommend
recommend using a top coat over your manicure if you want it to last. And last but not least, we have the shade Feeling Foxy, and this one's actually pretty interesting too. It's kind of following that trend I've been seeing where we're seeing a lot of navy blue in spring collections, but this one is a little bit more purpley. I would classify this as a very deep indigo shade, and it actually ended up having a very slightly jelly-like formula to it, but it gave me full opacity in two coats. It is really gorgeous. I thought it was a very interesting choice for Orly to go with a deep color in a spring collection, but again, it really just works with the rest of them, and I guess that is on trend for this season because we've been seeing a lot of it. So here are all of these shades together, and I find myself so fascinated by the combination of colors that ended up working just so perfectly in sync with each other, especially considering we have so many different types of polishes. So we have like the slightly dustier shades, we have the neon pastel shades, we have that really deep indigo shade, and somehow they really look gorgeous together. Definitely 70s vibes here. I'm absolutely loving it. And of course the formulas were just incredible. So yeah, those are the polishes, and like I always say, Orly is just one of the most underrated brands. I love their formula so much, their opacity is incredible, and I just love how smooth and self-leveling their polishes are. This collection to me feels a little bit like a spring version of their Rome With Me collection for fall 2020, which I'll link up in the cards if you guys missed it, but that was just a collection of six really beautiful creams that I felt were just so perfect for Skittle manicures, where each nail is a different color, and this collection collection to me feels exactly the same way. It's just like a springier version of that, where it's just these really beautiful, funky shades that work so well together. I just... Pfft. Incredible job by Orly. You guys did fantastic. So these polishes come in their usual giant 18 milliliter bottles with the rounded brush that I love. They are on the Orly website for $9.50 USD each, or you can get them at HB Beauty Bar for $7 USD each, and you can use my discount code Kelly to get 22% off your order. So I will link both of those down in the description for you guys. Orly also has the Color Pass program where you can get super discounted collection sets ahead of time. Time. I do have a discount code for that as well, so I'll link that information in the description if you want to join their subscription service. But yeah, that is it for my thoughts on it, but I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think of this collection? Are you into it? Do you think it's too funky for spring, or do you think it's just right? Let me know in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. And that is it, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Diane Eason, and Diane wants to know, <laughs> what's something about you that people would never believe? And then in parentheses she wrote, stuff like you used to pick fights in kindergarten. <laughs> Okay, so there's actually a story behind this. I don't remember if it was in one of my Patreon live chats or if this was one of my Amazon live streams, but in one of those I did mention a story that a lot of you guys were surprised about. So I recently, not that recently, it was pre-COVID, but I somewhat recently was going through some old stuff and I found a diary that I kept in kindergarten and I was reading through it and I saw, it's actually funny because I do actually vividly remember this, but I also just like rereading it almost sparked that memory for me. It was so funny. But yeah, so I used to play with this girl and we always played Spice Girls, which I don't really know what that is as a game, but I guess we just basically pretended to be the Spice Girls and I always loved being Baby Spice she always loved being ginger spice and I remember there was this one girl in our kindergarten class who made fun of my friend for liking ginger spice and she made my friend cry and I was really mad so I told her I wanted to go fight her outside by the swing set and in my diary I don't remember this part but in my diary I did write down that I waited all recess by the swing set and she never showed up so I guess I didn't actually technically start a fight in kindergarten <laughs> <laughs> but I sure did try, but it was only to defend my friend because she was crying. It was a whole ginger spice thing. If you guys are from the 90s and you recall the whole ginger spice situation, that was like, that was alive and prevalent in my kindergarten class. That was like a whole situation. So I had to defend my friend's honor and as her baby spice, you know, I had to have her back. <laughs> People, I feel like Gen Z who's watching this, if any of you guys are Gen Z, are probably like, I have zero idea what you're talking about, but you're really missing out if you don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess my um, surprise 
secret fun fact is that I did try to start a physical fight in kindergarten. Is there anything else that's a secret that I don't, and the people maybe don't know about me? I mean, a lot of people are very surprised to hear that I eat tomatoes like apples, where I just bite right into them and I love it, but I feel like I've used that as a fun fact before. So I guess picking fights in kindergarten is my best secret. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!